would you like to hear what my nuts have to say? I always love <laughs> hearing what your nuts have to say. Hold on. Hold on. Let me listen to them. Oh, they're just pumped for the uh, Never Ending Adventure podcast. Oh, that's <laughs> gross that you have uh, pumped nuts. No, not my... I, dude, I got like a bag of cashews in my, oh, yeah, okay. in my book raw, bag right here. Raw, yeah, raw, I'm not raw. talking about my my gnads. Your gnads, your my nether gnads, regions. My, ne- my nethers. All right, hit us with what we're, what we're talking about today. What are we talking about? Man, it's uh, The Duke. This is episode, what, 19 now? Yeah. Man, episode 19 of the podcast, episode 19 of the show as well. And I, I thought I had seen that this was like a throwaway episode. Um, I kind of felt that way too. Yeah, like know? there was someone that was saying, a lot of people were telling him to skip it on on socials and like this isn't really like super hmm. worth checking out but i rather enjoyed this one uh for no other reason than i it almost feels like we build the world a little bit more with getting to see this this cool like grand meeting of ooh royalty and, and getting to see who's there and who's hanging out and yeah. unfortunately it's kind of like I don't know. There's there's some secret little kids that broke in. There's a squirrel and then a little baby nut that that broke into the meeting. Yeah, and like and obvious, totally ruined it. Obviously, these rulers have to know. And for those of you who are haven't watched the episode or not, this is like the very end of the episode. They have a meeting of the U royalty in like a, the giant house, which actually ends up being the back scratching uh, ceremony later on in another episode. Okay, uh, is at, in this house as well. But you'd think that the U royalty would know the other people that were like rulers of yeah, U and like it's 150 years the sesquicentennial meeting and they don't even know. I mean, I'm like, where's the security? You know, like, isn't this like the most important people in U? Are they meeting for a reason? Yeah, is and there I don't no even see security. I, the the funny thing too is like there was like the ruler. This was like the rulers of U, but there's like only like half of the princesses we've even talked about there. So like, I guess there's like- There were all sub- the kings, weren't, wasn't there it? Was, like all the kings? Well, LSK was there, Lumpy Space oh, King. Okay. Or he, okay. Yeah. I didn't and know who so, LSK was. Yeah, LSK, LSK <laughs> Lumpy Space King was there and we really don't see him much in the rest of the show. Um, and like, but Wildberry Princess was there, PB was there. And so PB I was, like, was not there. Well, that's the thing. It's oh, well, four I mean, of the people they were fake. And Finn and Jake were uh, in like, place. This is worse than the the five okay the five Hokage summit in Naruto, where it's like you got the main bad guys breaking into the big like Hokage summit. It's ridiculous, man. I don't even I don't like that word. Hokage? I, just, I don't know Naruto, but that sounds dirty. No, it's not dirty at all. <laughs> Well, this episode was originally called... Or, sorry, Kage Summit. Uh, for my Naruto fans, my bad. Hokage is uh, like Kage of the Leaf Village. Anyways. Right, right, right. Wow, I messed that one up. <laughs> I'm a big Naruto fan, clearly. Um, yeah, sorry. We, we no, hopped into this. this we is, hopped into it. We, we hopped into the end of the episode first. Yeah, but this is, a never, this is an Adventure Time podcast hosted by two bros, two brothers that just, have talking nuts. It's just two brothers. And we, we just hang out. And we get to talk Adventure Time. Yeah. Um, and we're going through the seasons. I've never seen it before. So this is, again, just like a fun new little route on the journey for me. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, it's, it's fun going through it with you. That's for sure. Like, it's fun watching it through the, the mind and eyes of, of a noob, which is fun because I'm usually not the noob on anything cartoon related with you, you know? Well, we're talking like in these conversations, I'm like, Ned. Did you not watch cartoons as a kid? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I just was like stuck on like all the Nickelodeon. Uh, I need to get you on Naruto, man. I know. I need to. I got to up some anime game a little bit. It's just, in. It just is so in right now. It is. And I was so like in high school, it was always so nerve wracking. Like you'd try and slide it in the conversations like, oh, yeah, I remember back when I was in middle school and I totally watched Naruto. And you're like winking at him like, do you, do you still watch anime? <laughs> And sometimes, I think more times than not, someone would be like, oh, yeah, man, I like it too or whatever. And then the conversation immediately flips to like, holy crap, dude, I was just watching Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It goes from a very timid, like, let me just slide this in the conversation, see if we have this in common. No, we don't. Okay, I'm back in. Yeah, out. You're, you're slowly fishing out the anime geeks and nerds and, and it's so the different cool now. people. It's Let's be so real. different now. It's yeah. like all of like TikTok, Gen Z are in like... If you're cool, you're watching anime. I mean, it's it's an attempt at counterculture. It's an attempt at let's do something that's lame, that's cool because in its essence, like Adventure Time is like deeper. It's 
more meaningful. It's artistic. It's beautiful. It's well put together. But let's like shed all of the exteriors that like this is not cool to be cool. In the, you know, it's not cool to like cartoons anymore. It almost stinks because that means in 10 years, it's going to no longer be cool to watch anime as the anime watchers kids get to that age exactly. where they're like, oh, my dad loved anime. Whatever. I'm not going to watch anime. Just like rock music. How whatever rock generation A, now. whatever, whatever, whatever what, call them generation. Generation re, A, it restart starts over. The alphabet and, well, uh, if this Friday N. happens the way that it could potentially be the, uh, or sorry, last Friday. We're recording this before Friday. Mm -hmm. This will come out next Tuesday. I mean. It's supposed to be the Mushroom Wars. It was at 8, yeah. 13, 21 reference on the back of the Enchiridion from episode four. I don't think it, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's right? going to happen. Right? I don't know. It just depends on it's how like, in touch Pendleton Ward is with, <laughs> you know, the universe. entities of the universe. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll find out, man. We'll but find he's out. the, uh, the ho the kages of <laughs> no oh gosh you're saying you're just saying the, weird yeah, words the kages yeah. of uh adventure time sure we're not in touch with their fellow uh kings and queens but um man so but we did get to see a few new characters the duke of nuts the duke of nuts up. does he come back later on he is kind of in the background here and there um in one of the i think it's actually the series finale um, Bubblegum kind of bands together. He doesn't come back until the series finale. He's, he shows up another time, like he's in the room again, and then it's the same thing with the series finale. He's like in the room, but he doesn't really play this key part or side character or side quest or anything like that. So it's I, that's why I kind of felt this was like a throwaway episode, or there was just not good feedback on it. Or I mean, I I thought his voice drove me crazy. I hated his voice. It's not super pleasant, and you're not the only one who hated something about him, though. PB was pretty infuriated by him yeah, the let's, entire episode, let's even talk at the about end. That. Let's, let's talk about the beginning. So, like, Finn and Jake, they're throwing bottles of potion around. Who knows where the heck they got those? Because I was like, they're not Princess Bubblegums, where they just found a wheelbarrow full of potions. Finn chucks a boomerang potion, goes into PB's room. She's already pissed off at the Duke of Nuts, kicked him out of the kingdom. And they run up there, and she's freaking ballistic, dude. And I was like, she's got some demons, man. Like She knows how to hold a grudge. Yeah. She knows how to really hold a grudge. Yeah. And, and, and I think we got to see her true form. Yeah. I think I, that's I think what that is. I was bringing it out. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like going to say, like, this is where we get some, like, raw PB. Yeah. And this is where we really start to see her, like, uh, ability to be evil and ability to be sinister. And that... Obviously, she has kind of created these candy people. I would assume that the Duke of Nuts is even, even though he doesn't live in the candy kingdom, he lives in like nut world, whatever you want to call it. But that still had to have been a byproduct of Princess Bubblegum's creation, right? Maybe. I mean, it, I, what, what is interesting is he has a, a pudding deficiency. And so that makes me almost wonder if he did have something, like if maybe he was formed from like candy internal or something i don't know that, yeah it that seems almost like i'm reaching but it it really is the battle of sweet versus uh savory Ooh, this episode good oh good good princess, call out yes yeah, princess bubblegum you know versus the nutty versus the salty the but salty, like yeah. i i thought it was the connection with like there's so many desserts that have to like topped with nuts topped with peanuts you know drumsticks and sundaes and stuff like that and so i thought that that was like these two kingdoms you know work in a good trade that for ice cream sundaes and nut-filled candies, Princess Bubblegum has a duke out there that's like responsible for, for that side of yeah, the, that side of desserts. That's awesome if that's the case. I know. I, I just thought maybe it was a why, different kingdom. I don't and know. that's why I was disappointed we didn't get into it more because I was like, I yeah. want to know, you know, the trade routes in the in the politics behind <laughs> Nut Kingdom and if they have like chocolate fudge sundae duke and uh, banana split <laughs> duke and. <laughs> well, we we saw three nuts, I guess, right? We saw the the Duchess, the Duke, and then his son, the Marquis, the Marquis, uh, and then well, we did see a bowl of nuts that may or may not have been the Duchess's babies. If she's just crapping out yeah. babies, dude. oh, that's that's where he comes up again. He, they, Finn and Jake end up going to the Duke of Nuts has another child in a later episode, and they go to that child's birthday. Oh, okay. So cool. that's why it, it, again, it's it's a it's a very quick mention but nothing that like progresses any storyline with the Duke of Nuts and the Nut Kingdom. And then they have like nut guards there too, you know? So, but but Duke, 
I mean, you say you didn't like his voice, but he is such a great guy. It didn't, it didn't, didn't change matter. your opinion at all. No, I mean, like he was like so close to being my lovely of the episode, but I was like, I just can't can't get over his like cowering wimpiness. Like I don't, I can't even like describe what it was that bugged me about it. Well, he is mine. He is your lovely. Are we yep. getting into early lovelies? Let's do it. Let's get into your lovely. Give, give, give me some sugar, baby. Yeah. Uh, the Duke of Nuts is definitely my lovely. He, I don't know. He's just such a, just such a nice guy. I don't know, man. Like he's letting those little, the ducklings cross the pond. He's what, giving what's his, it all? He kisses he gives, babies. He gives his he son puppies. good advice. He gives Finn good advice. Don't don't change don't like change your mind. No, right I'm not. I'm saying I, I'm backing up your point. He lies but he's with still, his wife. Ooh, in yeah. the what was it? The cashew bushes or the, the yeah cashew bushes? <laughs> yeah, the kissing babies thing is a little odd to me. But like we recently had uh, an incident where a political figure was touching a baby or something like that, and people were like, <laughs> "Ooh," but I'm like, I don't know, man. Whatever. Yeah, that's like uh, a stereotype. It's, thing. it's almost like weird for you to like think of that act as like. a I don't know. Cancel. Cancel. Get, get controversial. This is the episode we get canceled on. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Yeah, he's he's my he's my lovely. The I got some honorable mentions though. The peanut bird. Mm-hmm. When we walk into the the nut kingdom and mm-hmm. there is a little nut bird. I thought <laughs> that thing was one of the, the cutest creatures I've seen on Adventure Time. And then also the peanut or the peppermint uh, butler. Yeah, he was actually so I was gonna We've say I've, seen him. I've got an honorable mention. But I can never not have Peppermint Butler up there in my lovelies, even though he just like is driving the carriage and then just gets like straight up booted off, has no lines in this episode. So I was like disappointed. No, we but he's like hopping more. up and down with the, the, handcuffs, with the handcuffs. You know, I thought that was so cute. Yeah. Um, my my yeah. true lovely of this one, I, my heart went out to the squirrel, man. Really? Yeah. Even though the squirrel seemed crazy. And he looks... A little looks looks crazy. crazy, and he was yeah. trying to kill Finn and Jake at the end too. But <laughs> I just it just was such a funny little sub storyline that Jake was like, "Yeah, I've got haters out there too." And the squirrel's like, "I want him to post my articles in his advice column." Yeah, he's got an advice column on like the OO newspaper, I know, or which, New, OO Weekly, or which something. is funny because I feel like Russell said so many times, "Wow, Jake gives really bad advice." Yeah, I that, I didn't even think about that. That's so funny. Um, but I love it. And he just like shows up and he just tries to throw the fan letter at Jake. And yeah. He's like, pick it up, pick it up. And of course, they don't see it. It's right in front of them. And then it but pays he can't be mad. He can't end. be mad at Jake for not seeing that. Uh, you know? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. I if, mean, it, if it's, that's it's the, the gross fault. If that's the way he's been delivering his fan mail and, and articles to be posted, like, obviously, there's a, reason, <laughs> there's a reason why it hasn't been picked up by the whatever newspaper of ooh. Do we ever get to learn a little bit more about his advice column? He, or is that just a one-off? I think the advice column's a little bit of a one-off. Oh, man. The squirrel does appear some more, but again, it's like they kind of just like use these characters as like background filler, filler characters some other times. There's no like canonical yeah. points to this episode. Except for they do like almost, I guess they try and kill our heroes at the end there. You son of a... Bleep blop. Son of a bleep blop. <laughs> they attack him. But, but Jake, on on his advice column, he's got just terrible morals. His moral compass is all over the place. In this episode, it's almost hilarious because he's kind of this instigator. You know, he's like egging on Princess Bubblegum every chance he gets. Yeah. You know? I mean. Well, I was going to go back because that was a good point that you said about kind of like Jake and the instigator with Princess Bubblegum. He just was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if she thinks he's a bad guy, he's probably he's probably bad guys. Like we're gonna be corrupt cops and yeah. we're gonna get him. And then when they show up and they realize he's a nice guy again, he just like immediately flip flops and he's like, oh yeah, like oh no, he's a good guy. Now Princess Bubblegum, like it, he's he, all over the place. He's all he over is. the place. But we can uh, we can probably talk a little bit more about Finn in this episode later. I'm gonna hold on to that. But yeah, yeah. Jake's Jake was just all over the place. Clearly, this can't be Princess Bubblegum. What is? What's he say? Like he's just, uh, the the fair Princess Bubblegum. The fair because Princess how, Bubblegum. How she looks. He's just roasting her. Man. I know. I know. Well, uh, it, he's roasting her, and then yeah, it just. I'm like, he's a great partner to Finn, but like, man, I can see why Finn's a confused twelve year old because he's got his brother dog going like ah da 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 nothing, yeah. nothing matters. Don't worry about it. Don't, Don't worry about anything. Did you hear my name get called out in this episode? No, three I didn't. times they said Russell. 
Wait, when, yeah, when Jake says it. Jake, Jake's in the bush and he goes, Russell, Russell, Russell. Russell, Russell, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> it says, I'm an ambush. Man, you're really out. looking for your name in shows. <laughs> no, I'm not. What? That's one time. That was actually a joke I said in college one time and got a good kick out of the That's table. That's a good one. Yeah. Russell with the dad jokes. Someone said, I heard something rustling in the bushes and I said, I wasn't in the bushes and everybody was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Wah, wah. It was one of my more proud moments. I can't believe I, ble- I remember that from three years. Years ago, or sorry, seven years ago now. <laughs> From seven years ago, you're 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 um, grasping at straws here, man. Well, clearly we aren't all as funny as some of these comedy writers are. Well, before we go into our ad, I want to know if there was anything episode specific that caught your eye because I had one, and it, and I still couldn't get over it. Maybe you could explain it. I tried to do some research. When Princess Bubblegum gets like lasered with the potion, they just put her in a giant milk suit, mm-hmm. and I tried to Google like. Is there like that's a reference to milk therapies or like so that was milk in the bathtub as well? I was wondering about that. Yeah, like she was in the carriage with the milk, and I tried to like Google if there like there's things called like milk baths, but I think they're more like spa related. I didn't know if there was anything like if you knew of any reference to like milk suits and milk healing or something. No, I mean I know milk isn't great for us because we're not. I mean we're not really supposed to be drinking milk from a cow. Yeah, or if I mean maybe it was like. syrup solution or like simple sugar to yeah. like re-sugar her up i don't know well i guess you know i feel like milk pairs really well with sweet things right not like with bubble you dip gum. in chocolate chip cookies yeah you're right yeah i was like milk and bubble right. gum well i don't I, know you're it, putting me on the spot i just i had to bring that up because it drove me crazy and, was, and you didn't find anything you, you brought it up and you didn't. i couldn't find anything but i wanted to know like episode we need show related. notes we need show notes for this freaking show where we're both <laughs> like hey this is what we're talking about <laughs> this is all over the place i know no we don't need show notes this is all this is all good quality content yeah you're right mm. but well, yeah i wanted to know if you had any like Nuts for thought on this episode. Uh, I, nuts for thought. <laughs> we can get into uh, some things like that a little bit later after maybe a commercial or two. But I did want to say uh, my sexiest character of this episode. We haven't had a, a sexy character oh, in a while. G- 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 give me some extra sugar, baby. Uh, the the chocolate ice cream nurse. Yeah. Oh, no. Nurse ice cream. Yeah. Nurse ice cream. Nurse so ice she cream. is a nurse. Yes, okay. she is. She's she not comes like back. A, I was, the, my hesitation was, is she like a an elderly woman care like caretaker and i'm like that's not really sexy but if she's just straight up like an, a chocolate ice cream nurse i don't know i don't know <laughs> she, i don't know there's a great future episode I'd let that, where what? we actually get some uh nurse ice cream backstory which is really cool ah she'll come back around she'll come back around. Do you have a sexiest man. character i don't think so man uh, only other like princess bubblegum looked She's your sexiest and, character? No, she looks rancid in this episode. <laughs> She's my most punchable character. And yeah, most punchable <laughs> character. No, actually, I may have a more punchable character. I feel like the Duchess of Nuts was low key evil because, like, we were talking about going, you know, Princess Bubblegum's like, he's evil. We got to capture him. And I was like, does she ever meet the Duchess of Nuts? Because she, like, spun around in the chair, did a 180 owl spin head, and was like, you're talking about my husband. Yeah, she's like, which I'm not even going to try it. Would you like to hear what my nuts have to say? You know, like she's yeah. like freaking out. She's very, uh, she's got this terrible, like disturbing cadence to the way that she talks. Yeah. And it reminded me of uh, Fairly Odd Parents, uh, Mr. Crocker. Yeah. They like teach her the Fairly Odd Parents, you know, that dude. Like, yeah. That's kind of what it reminded me of. It's yeah, like, she, she's like on the, on the, like, she's just so close to falling off the cliff of crazy. Yeah. She know, needs and, to be locked up, man. Yeah. It must have just been like, I don't know, make her memorable. <laughs> make her memorable, but like, yeah, yeah. what a, what an unhealthy marriage that must be. Maybe they just completely balance each other out because Maybe. he's just so sweet and such a good guy. And I just kept waiting for where is this flaw? He was going to take the blame. He was going to allow himself to be like the bad guy and, and be chained up forever, you know? And and it seems like his, his wife is very much the take no crap from anybody type. Yeah. Defend the family. Listen to my nuts. Listen to my nuts. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. But yeah, we got we got to get those those sponsies in. No more nut talk. No, it's it's there's gonna be a lot more nut talk. All right. See you on a minute. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Marilyn Macadamia, and I'm here today to tell you about my salty mixed nuts. Eating my nuts as part of a healthy diet may be good for your heart. 
My nuts contain unsaturated fatty acids and other nutrients. And they're a great snack food. Inexpensive, easy to store, and easy to pack when you're on the go. One drawback to my nuts is that they're high in calories, so it's important to limit your portions. So come on down to the nut kingdom and get yourself a handful of my salty nuts today. I went left too. You went left too. <laughs> Sorry. Welcome back, travelers. Yeah, you said you would lead us in, but I took it. That's a good one. It's mine. I went left too. <laughs> like I said, like, like Jake was just so good this episode. <laughs> he was good again, all over the place, not yeah. following directions. And the B story with the squirrel was awesome too. It's like, remember me, Jake? That's what it said at the end. They were like, remember me? He's like. No. <laughs> no. Yes, that dude is like a uh, beer for a girl or whatever. <laughs> beer for, for a princess. I can't remember what he asked in the meeting. Man, I got some Nettie's factoids to throw at you with this one. Lay it on me. It's the first time you've never uh, done the sound what? bite yourself. What are you talking about? Nettie's factoids. Nettie's factoids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When Jake and Finn accept the princess bubblegums, uh, like mission to go get the the Duke of Nuts. In the background, there's actually a plant with three stems and the number 666 on each one of the stems. So like, definitely showing PB's evil side. Yeah, don't like that one. Yeah. Give me a better... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was I just, wondering... I'm weird. I, dude, I'm just weird about that number. I got uh, 665 followers on Instagram. I had 666 and then I asked my girlfriend's dog to stop following me <laughs> on Instagram so I wouldn't have that number. Russell's over here being not superstitious but just a little stitious. Just a little stitious. <laughs> okay. Here's a better one because I was wondering this one too. The Duke of Head. The Duke of Nuts. Head? head the Duke of Head. <laughs> Duke of, <laughs> sorry guys. I got nuts we on the mind. Exp- <laughs> we just went way explosive. <laughs> the Duke right. of Nuts head no, dude. is an actual is a walnut the other thing so because it would look so oddly shapen so i had to like i had to figure that one out um it did look kind of weird when finn and jake are taking princess bubblegum's place in the meeting finn directly quotes four-time american presidential candidate and secretary of state william jenning Bri- J- jenning Bryan's famous cross of god speech saying i would be presumptuous indeed to present myself against the distinguished gentleman dot 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 before he gets cut off so I was like, that's what an odd thing to give Finn to quote. Like a little you know? bit of a deep cut there. Yeah, it's like a deep cut. But I was like, that that was just like what inspired the writers to throw in a William Jenning Bryan quote. Yeah. You know? That's so cool. I, I, don't, I don't know. But <laughs> don't know. those are your fast facts for you right there today. Fast facts. Fast facts. Nettie's factoids. Man, well, I got a question for you then. Let's let's go into so why why is letting ducklings cross a puddle on a Cape Villainous? What about that act is like because Jake could not think of any reason I on could, the spot. I can maybe think of a reason. Give me your Potentially. reason. Potentially. Yeah. Ducks love water, right? Ducks love water. And so preventing the ducks from going into the water could be villainous. Is it crime because they love it so much? Yeah. I don't know. It's like kind of being like, no, you ducks can't get in the water. Well, <laughs> For me, and this is my theoretically speaking. Theoretically speaking. I, I was kind of thinking something very similar. Um, and I'm no duck expert. I would just want to put that out there in case you were wondering. In case you were ready to cancel Russell for speaking out against ducks. Wait, wait, what'd you say, Mike? I would like to consider myself a duck expert. <laughs> Michael <laughs> I, is, well, Michael, you're going to have to confirm this one for me. Um, I My thought is by stopping wild ducklings from experiencing water, I think it would have long-term uh, effects on them. So... Not only their ability to swim, because they got to learn that at a young age and get that in their mind. I know it's innate to some degree, but that uh, their ability to capture food, I think they would be slightly hindered by that because they're never getting into water. They're just like hoping they find worms on the ground or something like that. And their ability to reproduce. Um, And let me just dive a little deeper in on all three of those. Uh, By babying a wild animal to such a degree, you would effectively stop it from properly learning to fend for itself. Uh, Shoot, I mean, it wouldn't even be capable uh, to compete for food against other ducklings and other ducks. So, like I said, hard for it to swim, hard for it to compete for food. Um, The duck, sorry, the Duke of Nuts is effectively killing these ducklings. Yeah. They never had a chance. Um, and and that's that's kind of my, theoretically speaking, I do wonder, so, Ned, like, for instance, though, on the mating thing, because I know I just skipped that, if you were a duck and you saw a duckling afraid of water, 
uh, I was terrible at swimming and you're swimming and you're going past it. So you're a duck in this instance. It's like my baby duck. No, no, no. You just see a baby another duck. duck. You see another duck. Another it's not duck. a baby. Any other it's duck. It's a duck. Uh, would you mate with it? What? <laughs> would you mate with that duck? No, you went what, what you went straight from like well, just, swimming in water no, to no. mating. No, you're in you're a duck, you're in the pond. You're seeing another duck that's terrible at swimming because it was taken away in captivity for a while by the Duke of Nuts. Uh, and oh, it's, you're talking about it's terrible. You're you're taking it out of the uh, out of the gene pool because no one wants to mate with a duck that can't swim. Yeah, so yeah, would no, you, because of natural selection. Would you mate with that duck, Ned? I guess not. But okay. I think that was a loaded answer, a loaded question. Anyway, yeah, no, just wondering if you would mate with that duck. <laughs> You just wanted to hear me say I would mate with a dog. I don't know. I don't know what you were going to say. Um, you sicko. No, nah, man. I'm sorry. I was listening to my, my nuts. Well, I've got some better questions for you that maybe on, on the deeper side. But That was theoretically than, speaking. What um, is deeper than my theoretically speaking? Not, yeah, well, I had questions for you about, yeah. about the morals and the deeper stuff of this episode. And oh, now, I'm, now I'm just going to sound silly because <laughs> we just talked about <laughs> We talked about morals. We talked about duck morals. No, you're a duck, dude. <laughs> okay, you just wanted to hear me say it. <laughs> you're a duck. You're, it's the fish sticks thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, well, in the deeper side, obviously... This episode, I see Finn dealing with one of his first, like we talked about Finnisms earlier, about how he jumps into action, he's ready to go, he's sword blazing, you know, blindly going into battle. And I do think I see Finn's side come out a little bit more where he's cognizant of like, maybe Princess Bubblegum's wrong on this one. Maybe I need to question like a pretty like, ferocious dictator type person and he even off the bat he's like what did he do that's so evil like why do we have to go get him so i see a lot of that in finn going on through the episode even when i mean like they they see the duke of nuts they see him being really nice and they're still torn because he still wants to yeah he's torn up until the very end yeah he still wants to like keep in princess bubblegum's favor which i was like Okay, come on, yeah, man. You gotta Start drop that at some red, point. You need to see some yeah. red flags here, dude. Like, well, what on. is it that, that Princess Bubblegum says to him? My my champion, my like my champion, the, cha my the champion of the Candy Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So like my wonderful champion. She's really buttering him up, and this is again where we see kind of her emotional abuse towards him, where she knows he's like into her, and she's like, "Oh, you're so wonderful, Finn, <laughs> my champion." After she's like got fangs coming out of her mouth like two seconds before that yeah. you know so yeah. i was like that's that's freaking manipulative for sure but i was a question the deeper question was like what would you do in this situation you busted something up you knew something was your fault you know you hurt and or maimed and or emotionally hurt somebody you love but like their anger is directed towards someone else maybe or something else but like do you fess up is it is it you yeah. know, like, what do I, you do? I know exactly what I would do, or I know what younger me would do. I don't know what, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of the kind of guy that would just, I'll deal with the consequences. If I messed up, I messed up sort of a thing. Um, but I have an example from elementary school. Um, we were on the playground, you know, like, I think it was like third or no second, it was second grade. And we were going through this weird phase where we were creating like, ninja stars out of paper mm -hmm. you know and no, then we like, all did that yeah. yeah tossing them on the the um recess the the field outside whatever the playground geez uh <laughs> <laughs> wow it's been a the playground it's man, been, it's a, been a while since i've had fun i worked i worked yeah well i just <laughs> worked a full day of work and now we're doing this um but yeah so we were doing that and then it escalated to i think that might have been around the same time that like you know, we were playing with Beyblades and stuff like that. And we were taking, uh, you know, those pink erasers, uh, the like really thick pink erasers that are like two inches long and like maybe an inch or a half an inch wide. Uh, and we were like basically trimming those down to being just a square and smoothing out the sides and then throwing them like frisbees across the, the playground, uh, not really at each other, but just watching them skip and bounce on the ground or whatever and seeing how far they would go. Uh, and I tossed one and it nailed this kid square in the nose and gave him like 
like it made him bleed, like straight up made him bleed. He fell to the ground, started crying. And I definitely has hesitated on saying anything. And then we got to the classroom and I was feeling super guilty. And the teacher said, okay, uh, who did this? Like someone needs to fess up. Like this is not okay. And I swear I hit this kid. Like I, I, it had to have been me. I mean, it was a lot of blood for an eraser. <laughs> and the dude was like 20, straight through 20 him. yards away. Look, it was a great throw. I had an <laughs> arm <laughs> is what I'm saying. No, but I, I swear it was me, man. I mean, or at least in my memory it was. And I confessed, I confessed to the teacher. I said, Hey, I'm sorry. I did this. Like I went up to her, you know, and I was just like, I threw an eraser and she's like, like, what'd you throw? You know, I, I let her know and all this stuff. And she was like, there's no way it was an eraser. Like an eraser couldn't do this. Like she denied it, denied it, denied and so it. So you're like, I got to do it again. Other to, kids got <laughs> in trouble. It. She blamed like these three like kids that were always getting in trouble. She just blamed them. And what? I was like, yeah, it was terrible, man. And I like, even after that, I was like, that was me. Like I'm pretty positive my eraser did that. Um, Maybe they did hit him with a rocket. I just <laughs> no, happened to dude. throw something at the same time, but like I felt so guilty. Did the right thing and avoided the consequences. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was, I must just have a heck of an arm. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's it. You're just I'm freaking just Nolan Ryan out here at right, second gloating. grade. I'm gloating on this podcast about my <laughs> <laughs> about my arm, my arm in second grade. Well, I, was a, I was a pitcher. It was cool. You peaked in second grade, man. I peaked in elementary school, that's for sure. Fifth grade. <laughs> Well, here's one that I think that we all probably experienced because I feel like this was like such a similar situation when you go to a friend's house when you were little and like you'd be joking around or something and like you would knock something over, break something. You would like, you know, accidentally scratch your friend's dad's car with your bike and you go inside and like the dad figures it out and they start yelling at, at their son and you're like, Oh, like do, do I even jump in and like try to take the heat yeah. from my friend's dad and then it's kind of the same thing when you're like it was me and then the like the dad might just be like oh well like don't be idiots and go away yeah you know? like, so you didn't like Christmas story it, or did that happen or you just yeah I mean like no, yeah. I don't have a particular instance okay. I just remember feeling that way like when yeah. you go to a friend's house you have like this like you can pretty much mess up anything you want and your your friend's probably going to be the one that gets blamed. And they're you know? probably not going to tell your parents unless it's really bad. I mean, what was that? The Christmas story when Ralphie was like, or his mom was like, where'd you learn that word? Oh and yeah, he, he, says blames his, he blames his oh, other friend fudge. and not his dad. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, then the mom's on the phone just, what? What, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> uh, man, do you have do you have any lessons from this? Yeah, episode? I do have some lessons from this one. I feel like you know we didn't really, uh, you know we didn't we we talked a lot about just like fun stuff from this episode, but I I did feel like the ethical dilemma in Finn to one be honest. Um, you know he tries to get away with not being honest um, by like here's why uh, what he did to you was good. You know. Uh, the the dink in your car looks now the car looks better you know like oh yeah the he tries to like at the yeah end. he tries to brush off that it's not that bad like please don't punish him because he's not that bad yeah and then that acting to, was real rough yeah the acting scene where he was the assassin was <laughs> was really rough um but man in terms of like lessons on this one I would say that I I love what the Duke of Nuts said. Uh, when he was talking to Finn. Yes. Yeah. I think it, I have that written down I mean, too. I mean, dude, it's so good because like Finn was like super bummed out and he confesses to the Duke of Nuts that he threw the potion at Princess Bubblegum. The Duke of Nuts is not even mad and he's like, that's okay, man. You made a mistake. It's all part of growing up and you never really stop growing. And I was like, dang, I man. love that. The Duke, that was, I mean, there's no reason he's not your lovely man. He is just such a... I, even if his voice is weird, he's such a sweet guy. Yeah, I'm. Mean, so Mister Rogers of the Ooh universe. Mister Rogers. Um, no, but I thought that was like yeah. such a good thing. Like when you really think about it, to be like we're always still growing, and at some point in our life, I feel like we do as adults. We're like, I can't make mistakes. You know, I've been at this job for four years. Like they, you know, you're and you're always growing, and mistakes is part. Mistakes are part of your growing and development, and like. It sucks that, like, at some point in your life, you do feel like any mistake made is a big, and I think that's what causes a lot of people stress. Is what causes a lot of people anxiety. Is that yeah. mistakes are par for the course? Yeah, it's gonna yeah. happen. And and as long as you are growing, 
you know, you don't purposefully go, I made a mistake, you know, like, screw it. I won't, like, it doesn't matter because it does matter. It's about growing and learning lessons and yeah, becoming but, a better person at the but even other side. Rationalizing of that, like, we, you're still going to make mistakes. Even if you learned mm-hmm. a lesson or learned the lesson or committed yourself to a different way, like, but there's the same thing or something else. Like, you're going to end up making a mistake. Yeah. Again, and I'm not saying know? mistakes are going to, that's what, that's my point is yeah, that mistakes yeah. are still going to happen. But Finn probably won't throw oddly shaped potion bottles there anymore. are certain lessons you learn one time exactly yeah, certainly exactly i you didn't have to, i didn't throw another eraser if yeah you were no more yeah. throwing freaking beyblade star erasers across the playground after yeah, that I, no more i think that was definitely the end of it i think they just as a precaution were like all right no more erasers then yep. you know and and then we went on to play tackle football and got a tackle football banned from the elementary <laughs> school so I got, yeah i got a lot of things banned from school i feel yeah. like i don't know why like our generate or my class was the one that get that banned from school. I don't know. So stupid. But um, yeah, I mean that, that was like um, kind of my main, that's why I thought that was such a good lesson. And that's kind of the, lesson. and that's kind of, I feel like this overarching lesson over adventure time is you see, it's all about Finn's growth. And it's all about Finn making mistakes in certain situations. And kind of by the end of the show, he, he comes at all of his different problems with, the mindfulness of all the lessons he's learned for like nine seasons. And wow. it's so great. And that development is I'm like excited. really intentionally put in the show, which I think is so good. Well, my, my lesson, well, you took my main one, but my other one was uh, don't mess with little nut. Don't mess with little nut. Don't mess with the little nut, man. Little nuts will mess you up. I know. I thought he was like my auntie lovely, even though he was cute. I he was, was like, adorable. man, he was really sadistic though. What happened? Do you think he ate his twin? Oh, the, the, the other half the of double. his nut? Yeah, he probably killed him. Probably ate it in the womb or something. <laughs> I don't know how that I don't works. know. I have gotten a bunch of peanuts in bags and boiled peanuts, you know, yeah. that, that's like missing ones. So I don't know if that was biggest, the joke. Biggest disappointment at a baseball game. Bag of, bag of nuts and one of the one of the peanuts is just like, I feel like you got ripped off. Or something, yeah. Like a penny, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? Oh, um, man. Well, I'm tapped out on yeah. this episode, I think. Y'all, thank you so much. Again, this was great. Please go and like review us, check us out, do all the things. Dang it, I forgot another. I forgot the email again. That's never Is ending there, adventure. No, no, I forgot oh, the oh, like change band the email. email. Yeah, they can, you guys can email us. No, You're no, we'll get a famous. separate one. We're too famous. We got too many, too many advertisers coming and trying to the real never ending adventure. Trying to pay us a whole bunch of money. Um, yeah, man, just. Y'all, please go review us on Apple Podcasts and everywhere. I mean, we're on just share all it with platforms. Your fam- just share it with your friends. Share it with your fam. Yeah, like, share it with your babies. We're, we're really trying to get baby. into the, the baby demographic with yeah. this podcast. Um, and if you can do us a little favor and follow us on Instagram or TikTok, that would be rad as well. Yeah. Uh, you can find us at Never Ending Adventure Podcast on Instagram, TikTok at Never Ending Adventure Cast, or maybe... Adventure Time Podcast. I'm trying to decide whether or not it'd be a good market. You might be changing switch it. that up. So be on your toes. Uh, yeah, we'll do a post to let y'all know. And then also don't follow us on Twitter at NEA underscore podcast. I continue to say that because, uh, Ned, I don't want you looking at our Twitter right now. I might be starting a hashtag no Ned thing. So yeah. Uh, sorry, fans, if, if y'all were pumped about that. Hashtag Russell cast. Hashtag no Ned. Um, because I think I'm the only one to post I on Twitter. Twitter. I hate yeah, I do too. It sucks. Um, unless you love it, then we love it. Nah. All right. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you guys next week. Love you guys. Safe adventures. Due to the nutty events of the sesquicentennial grand meeting of Ooh Royalty, the Ooh Royalty have declared a code orange for the entire Ooh Kingdom. As such, while traveling, please prepare for double, no, triple delays at all TSA checkpoints. We are doubling down, no, tripling down on all security, and you better believe any nuts identified will be roasted. That being said, these dorks love you and wish you the greatest of adventures. Neverending Adventure has been hosted by Ned Pruitt and Russell Tyndall and engineered by the one, the only, Michael Hitchcock. Until next time. Until next time.